Welcome to Richard Suttmeyer's Four and Four. Four blips on my radar screen presented in four minutes or less. My first blip continues my discussion of notional amount of derivative contracts. Five banks dominate the creation of derivatives. J.P. Morgan, Citi, Bank of America, Wachovia, and HSBC. According to the controller of the currency, J.P. Morgan continues to have a wide lead in creation at $90 trillion, or nearly half the $183 trillion shown on the Q2 FDIC quarterly banking profile. Citigroup and Bank of America are second and third with $41 trillion and $39 trillion respectively. The distant fourth on the list is Wachovia with $4.9 trillion. When the regulators orchestrated the shotgun wedding of Bear Stearns to J.P. Morgan back in March, Bayer had close to $14 trillion in notional amount of derivative contracts. These are not in the FDIC data. Could it be that J.P. Morgan was selected to take over Bayer so the regulators could camouflage the exposures at J.P. Morgan? My second blip describes how I constructed my list of problem banks. Richard Sutmer's list of problem banks represents publicly traded FDIC-insured institutions with overexposure to C&D loans and with a strong sell or sell rating according to ValueEngine.com. Each of the 39 community banks on the list has a market cap of $100 million. The list could have been more than 500 bank stocks, as an interesting fact is shown that the FDIC data shows that 486 publicly traded banks are either on the pink sheets, 144 of them, or traded on the bulletin boards, another 342. While you cannot assume that just because they trade on the pink sheets or boards they are ripe for failure, it's now just a new observation. When I began my studies back in March 2006, I did not notice the symbols .ob or .pk attached to any bank stock symbols. I have a long-standing personal policy of not commenting on stocks trading on the bulletin board or pink sheets because they are volatile, illiquid, hard to research, if not all three. My list of problem banks will not be given away. You could, you, if you'd like a copy, send me an email to gmcreports at aol.com and I will return a subscription form. The cost is $250 for this 20-page special report packed with graphs and tables. Subscribe, and you can also send me an email with a bank stock symbol, and I will return that stock's profile. My third blip reviews my fearless prediction of the week and that any rise in oil prices would be short-lived. NYMEX crude oil traded as high as 118 spot 60 as Hurricane Gustav entered the oil fields of the Gulf of Mexico, but then traded as low as 105 spot 46 this morning, below the 200-day simple moving average at 111 spot 38 for the first time since May 2007. Up next is hard, hard, hard hearted Hannah, who could become the vamp of Savannah. Boy, am I dating myself. My fourth book looks at the weekly chart of the Dow Industrial Average. Monthly supports are 11,112 and 10,836, with a weekly pivot at 11,690 and the 200 week simple moving average at 11,740. The Dow has been trying to break out above its 200 week for six weeks now. Will seven be the charm? If you have any comments or questions, shoot me an email. GMC reports at AOL.com. That's today's four and four. Enjoy your day.